Adrian, uh, just to say, firstly, thanks very much for, for doing this. Um, I'm going to share this on a number of different platforms, and there's still a, a, a load of interest in you here in, in Wales. As, uh, really? You know, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. People wow. are excited about uh, me yeah. being able to talk to you. Um, you. As I can hear from your accent, which actually surprised me a little bit, you you yeah. grew up originally in the, in the northwest, didn't you, of, 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 of the UK before Australia. People over That's here correct. as being yeah. Australian, you know. Yeah, I, I was in I was in Preston, hmm. and uh, they told me Willie Cunningham actually he he was a Scottish international, hmm. um, and he played left back for Scotland and also for Preston North End, and I was I think I was about sixteen at the time, and I, and I was an amateur in the youth grade, not hmm. a not a you know not a um, a professional player or anything like that. I, I was I was playing as an amateur, and he says, "You're a bit small." We don't think you'll make it. My eldest brother, Alec, played with Tom Finney during that time. He wow. was, a, was a striker as well. Mm. And they said, you, you know, you're not going to make it because of your size. wise it looks like you're always going to end up like this. So by the time Jimmy Kelly saw me from ex-Blackpool player and B International for England, he saw me playing and he says, come to Fleetwood. I played for them for four weeks. And they, he said to me, come on, we'll go to Australia now. And I said, why would I go to Australia? And he said, because the grounds are hard and you like to run with the ball. Hmm. They, they, because obviously in Britain at the time, the grounds were bloody awful. Yes, and everything course, like yes. that. So anyhow, it, it's hmm. a short story. And then Bobby Charlton tried to sign me after the World Cup for um, yeah. for Preston North End. I know, yeah. So, right. I, I, mean, I've got, I went through your history last night and it's an amazing story. I learned so much about you, actually. But uh, yeah, the Bobby Charlton, because Bobby Charlton quite unwell at the moment isn't he is uh, yes yeah which is which is, Adventure, is it? yeah it looks like yeah. that it is yeah um uh, so if this this place called fleetwood in, in australia at the time of course like like me or anyone no, else fleetwood fleetwood in in blackpool oh fleetwood blackpool. in blackpool okay but he, yeah. sorry, he, he, from jimmy kelly for fleetwood he, uh, he, he was coaching them yeah in the uh, the lancashire combination league wow. or whatever it was yeah, and he says, "Come on, and uh, you know, straight away." I was on five pounds a week, I remember, mm. and then he said, "In Australia, I can get you thirty pounds a week." Oh, there straight you go. Away. Job done. And so I spoke to my girlfriend, and I, and I just said, "I'll go for six months," and <laughs> then within within months, I got picked for New South Wales, and yes. she came over, and mm. she was going to stay for six months with me, and then we go home. Well, by the end of the season, I'm being picked for Australia. So she didn't see her family for six years. <laughs> wow. Uh, was Jimmy Kelly, was he, was he going, he was moving out there at the same time as you, or did he just recommend that you went to? He was, he was offered to coach there again. He'd already been across there coaching. Mm. Mm. So uh, with South Coast United, wonderful spot where I, I still live here now. And mm. um, he said, you'll like the place and everything like that. So he, he came, brought me over and then it, Obviously, he was expecting me to just go home as well. But as mm. I say, the, You're uh, banging the, international the, goals football, in. the international football was a, a bit of a plus. Yeah. yeah. How did you get to be? I mean, how did you, did you so quickly then qualify to play for, for Australia in that way? Well, it's Australia and England at that time. They were, they were just very close and, and mm. stuff like that. And um, it was we had quite a number of people who went over in, in the coal mines and the steelworks and, and different situations. Mm. So uh, it was just a matter of, I suppose, how good are you? And then they, I had a passport and a citizenship before I could blink. Wow. I came back, I came back from playing against, I think it was South Korea or something, we're overseas. I arrived back at the airport. South Korea put a complaint in about my passport. I was still on a British passport and I jumped off the plane in Australia on the way back and there was my Australian one. And a citizenship and everything, yeah. yeah. How did you feel about that at the time? So, if, you know, be, inverted commas of becoming Australian or, yeah. or acquiring an Australian status? Yeah, well, the, the, my first game for Australia, we, we were playing at the Sydney Cricket Ground, which is mm. obviously the biggest ground at that time. Huge. Uh, and um, we played against Greece. And two, yes. weeks, before, two weeks before Greece met mm. a draw with England. Mm. And... I'll never forget um, the coach. He, he was Hungarian and everybody called him Uncle Joe. He was a lovely, lovely gentleman. And uh, when he read the team sheet out, 
I'd, I'd been with the team all week and I, I didn't expect to be starting. And then we had this practice match and I scored quite a few goals. And so he read the team out and I was last number 11. And when he said, and he said, how do you feel, young man? I said, I suppose that's my England career fucked up. <laughs> yes. That was it. And, and, and it certainly was, yeah. Um, yeah. So everybody started laughing and everything. But yeah. I was serious. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was joking. <laughs> I can't play for England now. <laughs> because yeah. in, in, in football, it's not like these other sports, these toy sports, the mm. rugby union and, and all this. I shouldn't say that in Wales. No, I, I, I agree with you. By the way. But, uh, you yeah. know, they can play for a number of countries. They just yeah. sort of change over. But anyway, the football yeah, that a was bit, a, a bit different. It, it was wonderful for me to be able to do that and then make the World yeah. Cup. And obviously, eventually, Cardiff City as well and, and the other yeah. clubs I went to. You know. Yeah, I mean, like I say, it's, it's a fantastic story. Um, I, 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 uh, one of the players that comes up, uh, Attila Abonyi. Is that how you pronounce yes. his name? And yes. um, I know you what, what you, you're saying what an what an awesome player he was. I think he was involved Correct. in the match. Was he involved in the, uh, involved in the match? Did you, did you score in that game? Your first he game? scored. We yeah. won one nil against Greece, and he scored. Uh, he was my roommate every time I played for Australia, hmm. and he was my club mate after I was playing down here on the south coast, and then St George in hmm. Sydney. St. George Budapest, again, Hurry, uh, Hungarian background club. They bought me and then we became prolific goal scorers. We won everything with the club and also, um, you know, with, with quite a few others from that club who, who were internationals. So after I got picked for New South Wales, they sort of chased me, that club chased me to, uh, to sign for them and then follow on to the national, many, many national games and stuff, you know. Yeah, you you immediately started scoring goals then, but you were still quite young, weren't you? When I say you were only really a kid when you when you went out 19. there. Nineteen. Yeah, I was nineteen. Yeah, but I was I was five foot four, Whoa. and uh, yeah. So when I got picked for New South Wales, hmm. I sort of uh, and in them days you didn't live together. It, it was a no no. So hmm. I wrote to um, I, I wrote to my wife's father. Yeah, and I asked him. Um, if, if we could get married hmm. and so we got married and uh everything turned out okay you know it was uh it was just wonderful experience and everything that's doreen like that. of course doreen i've got yeah. a welsh daughter as well and hey. she's still welsh she still she still is not naturalized my daughter yeah born born in cardiff obviously yeah just yeah. outside yeah wow yeah. wonderful um the 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 um Getting into the World Cup finals and you know, um, heading for like nineteen seventy four and whatever, and um, in in that amazing group with uh, not not just Chile and not just East Germany, but also West Germany, which of course filters through this story because one of the characters in the West German side became a bit bit of a, a role model for you. Um, what was that like for you? What was that like as an experience? Anyway, you know, it must be incredible. It, it's amazing. It's um, when when I got back. It, it, it was then I realised what I'd just been through mm. uh, because I've, I've, I've always been one that, that uh, don't get overexcited, you know, with who I'm playing against or, or, mm. or whatever my teammates, I, I, because I always thought I'm OK, I can manage with whoever. I felt comfortable doing that, you know, so mm. it, it was when we came back and we realised we just played against the world champions, the whole world, 220 odd countries, whatever it was. Mm. And, and I swapped shirts with the captain of the world champions. Mm. And also I was picked as one of the best players in that game from the, from the French uh, newspaper where they used to put the votes in. And then I, I didn't realise the other game in East Germany, I got a couple of points for that one as well. So it was like, you're one of the better ones in the group. And it was the hardest group because East Germany were the only team to beat West Germany. And, the, the, and Chile, we played against Chile as well. What a group. I have to just switch this phone off. Somebody's trying to get me. It keeps that's, dinging. Sounds like my alarm clock. <laughs> and it's somebody saying, I'm just watching a documentary on ESPN. And it's All about right. the bloody American where I was playing. I was on uh, that. Okay. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yeah. That's the way. The, 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 obviously, the, the picture which which uh, grabbed me straight away was that, that lovely picture of you walking off the pitch with Franz Beckenbauer, you know, kind of yeah. side by side. Yeah. Wonderful, yeah, because uh, there was three of us in that picture. It, 
I don't know whether you only saw two in that. There's only two or... that I, I, I saw, I think, in the close-up. Yeah. Maybe. Well, as it's widened, my, mm. the, the captain of Australia then, Peter Wilson, he mm. was showing his shirt, holding it up, and and trying to get Beckenbauer's shirt. And uh, Beckenbauer said, fuck off, I'll swap it with him. He's the best player. <laughs> That's only my story. Sorry, no more swearing now. <laughs> but, but honestly, yeah. I, I'd, al I'd already fixed it up mm. because we went to we <laughs> went to the game and yeah. as we arrived by coach mm. uh, in, in Hamburg and all their team is warming up already. And I, I was always a, a bit of a joker on the bus and the sing-along type of thing. And uh, so I said, they're going to be knackered by the time we start. I said, we'll be all right today. So anyway, as we're all walking in, I walked across to where they were warming up yeah. and I saw Franz Beckenbauer, who, who I'd appreciated before from living in England and I watched him in the World Cup and stuff yeah. like that. Awesome Absolutely player. awesome mm. player. Mm. You know, the best in the world defender yeah. and, and an absolute gentleman too. So mm. anyway, I walked up and I said, I'll swap shirts with you after the game. And he looked at me like, who the hell's this? Like cheeky yeah. little boy. And, and he goes, what number are you? I said, don't worry, I'll be next to you all day. And after the game, yeah, yeah. sure as hell, we swapped. He actually swapped again when we played in America. And he was uh, New York Cosmos and I was with the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Yeah, that's and right. I, I... We beat them. We beat them as well. And, and so it was nice. It was nice to swap after. Yeah, I mean, he, he kind of did, he kind of did everything because I mean, as as I just turned on my light, I mean, it's just still relatively yeah. cold and dark and early here. Um, <laughs> when um, I, I remember, I'm a lifelong Cardiff City supporter, obviously, and yes. I actually launched the Cardiff City phone in, you know, so a bit of wow. a little bit of an obsessive sort of thing. But um, I know, you know, I know you as Adrian Alston, you know, the the Cardiff City uh, player, and yes. you know, the, you can't still got. Probably because you know, because of the Australian thing, you have that legendary status, and and uh, you know that's how I kind of know you. But only looking at you into your stuff last night, I realised I vaguely remember you went out to the states. But looking at the details, and it was, was was really interesting. One of the things that you're 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 um, credited with 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 inventing is is the Cruyff turn. Yeah, five days before. Did you? I did it five days before in the World Cup, and yeah. thought no more about it. Hmm. And then I, I have many a joke after, that, but it, it, it's just Cruyff turn, Cruyff turn, Cruyff turn, because hmm. he, he was playing for the Netherlands and, and, and they nearly won the World Cup and, and you're a big player already. Hmm. Whereas Australia, nobody knew who we were. And so for me to do it at that time, you, you're sort of non-existent, which is a bit sad because, yeah, I did it first. And he, he must have been in his bloody bedroom watching it on TV and thinking, I can do that. And so he's ended up, <laughs> it's just, but even, even in Australia, because at that time, hmm. the media wasn't very big. It was ABC and then a couple of newspapers, ABC TV and a couple of newspapers. And hmm. it, it just wasn't, you know, big at the time. Otherwise it, it, it would have been made a great deal of, you know. Was it but, because uh, it, it is a sports coverage or was it mostly Aussie rules kind of, kind of soccer stuff? There, Aussie rules it? in Victoria. Yeah. New South Wales is rugby league. Okay. I mean, you know, yeah. and, and we sort of, the World Cup team, we sort of put the uh, football on the map yeah. here. You know, from then on, at least, it's, it, it's gone on and on a bit. We've got National League and, you know, teams have won the Asia Cup and, and stuff like that. So yeah. we've had many players going overseas, you know, pr probably not playing at the highest level, but as, yeah, there's, you know, there's yeah. a few. Half decent players. We we had um, Tony Vidmar at one stage at Cardiff. Of yeah, Tony Vidmar, yeah, decent player. Um, yeah, of course. The, the, so I love I love that thing about the Cruyff turn. That's that's fantastic. That uh, <laughs> the 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 Alston turn. That's what nice Have you watched I'll, it? I'll always know it. That it, have yeah, you watched it? You well, do they, uh, the Cruyff they one. Put up, they put it up together with the two of oh, us. Oh, have they? No, it. I haven't seen them together. No, no, no. Yeah, it's on. I think it's on Twitter or whatever it was on, okay. and it shows us mm. at the exact speed, at the exact spots, and it was identical. Just really? Completely. Wow. The only difference was the stopper for East Germany, who who was one of the best stoppers in, in the world at that time mm. when they played uh, West Germany, Gerd Muller never touched the bloody ball. But mm. 
he, he just dragged me down straight away when I got past him, whereas Cruyff managed to get away. So it looked yeah. a bit more special for you. Uh, I'll have to check that out. No, I did, I did, I've never seen that. I'd, like, I'd love to see that. Yeah. Uh, the other person who comes up with a big me- uh, a mention is uh, the uh, is it Ra- Rasic, the, uh, the Rasic Australian. But I, I assume it comes across from what I can see as a, a bit a bit of a character. He is. He's uh, he's very loyal. Mm. He, uh, in fact, he rang me. I think it was on the thirteenth of this month, mm. and he said, "Just a reminder, Noddy. Everybody calls me Noddy here from my heading ability." Okay. Uh, and that was and that was Otti Abonia, my roommate, who started that in nineteen sixty nine, and it just it's carried on ever since over here. But anyway, he rang me up and he said, Noddy, he said, I'm just reminding you, 47 years ago, we qualified for the World Cup in uh, Hong Kong. We beat South Korea 1-0. Lovely. Uh, so he rings all his players and stuff and everything like that. He's 80, what, 85 now, maybe. 86. Wow. Yeah. What, what, what uh, nationality was he originally? He was uh, Croatian, hmm. on the border of Croatia. And I think he's Croatian. One of them, any Macedonian, Croatian, whatever it was, on the yeah. border. He, he's he's Australian. He just tells everybody, "I'm Australian." That's it, and and I do too because yeah. when I put that that shirt on for the first time against Greece, hmm. it was just so special. I, I mean, as soon as I pulled it over my head, I just felt something, and I thought, "That's it, that's it." You know, and I always say to people now, the only thing English about me is my accent. Because I've, <laughs> I yeah. came here 52 years ago and I've been married, um, sorry, I came here 53 years ago. Yeah, 69. And, and uh, is it? Is that right? Uh, I came 68, 52 years ago. 52, 52 yeah. It's yeah. 53 years, yeah. And I've been married, uh, I've been married 52 years as well. So, yeah. So, I feel Australian. I'm an Australian, yeah. Um, then when you when you uh, w- w- went back to, to the UK, like you said, you nearly you nearly went back to Preston, and Bobby Charlton would have been heavily involved then, wouldn't he, at the time? Yeah, they were third division at the time, though, mm. and so after the World Cup, you were mm. sort of thinking, I want to do, I want to play in the big time, you know, I want to I want to play in the big time, and uh, if I had my time over again, quite honestly, I wouldn't have ended up at Luton Town. I probably wouldn't have ended up at Cardiff because. Uh, three German clubs came after me. They yes. just won the World Cup. Yes. England didn't even qualify. Yes. And Franz Beckenbauer said to me when he saw me in America after that, mm. he said, just tell me why you went back to England. And I went, well, probably my wife's family was still there. My, you know, and my, my parents were still there as well. But for football's sake and playing at the highest level, I probably should have signed for either Hamburg or uh, Hertha Berlin. Eintracht Frankfurt was after yeah. me as well. Three massive Frankfurt. clubs. Yes. Yeah. And, and Beckenbauer said, England didn't even qualify. Nobody knows who you are in England because you live in Australia. And he said, and everybody in Germany knows who you are. He said, you'd have been a star without even trying, you know. Mm. But that's uh, life. Any, any, life. any regrets on that now? No, because mm. my son's Australian, mm. wonderful, a wonderful man. He, he, he has triplets who are now 17 years old. And one of them is in uh, the young lady. She's in the Australian ballet. She lives in Melbourne. She left home at 15. She just was selected and she just left and, and took it in her stride. Who's a shy little girl and everything. And she, so she's in big time in the Australian ballet. And uh, his two boys play representative football under 18s for, for the uh, Illawarra in the New South Wales League. See, Australia's a big country. If we say New South Wales, we're talking, it's a big, it's a big travel, you know, to play your games and stuff like that. Very big country. So, uh, yeah, they play rep football. My daughter, I wouldn't have had my son if, if I didn't, um, sorry, he was, he was already born. My son was already born in Australia, but I wouldn't have had my daughter who was born in Wales. So I wouldn't have had a, a Welsh daughter. So no, I am quite happy that we came to Cardiff. Yeah, that's a great that's a great answer, actually. Um, yeah, because that that that's incredible, though. I mean, that uh, that that World Cup really. I mean, uh, it, it totally kind of made you, didn't it? Really, it was a real big breakthrough, wasn't it? I mean, you could look at oh, look at you know, yeah. wow. Yeah. yeah, I was already I was already doing well, you know, you know, with hmm. club football here and 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 playing. 
yeah, playing, you know, international football and stuff like that. Hmm. However, when I, um, after the World Cup and, and it was in it, I was the only player who was bought by overseas. You know, I was the first Australian to hmm. play in European football with Cardiff City, first one to score in Europe, first one score a hat-trick in the FA Cup. Whatever game that was, three headers, I think it was, playing for Cardiff and all the other things. Yeah, you know, you have a you have quite a few firsts. So mm. um, it's it's I was very proud, you know, to play for Cardiff. I was accepted, you know, many, many friends and 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 my wife loved it. My wife loved Cardiff. So a little bit disappointed that they sold me. And Jimmy Jimmy Andrews in, in the book after said didn't really suit me. Uh, playing in, in, in England. I don't know why the, the statement was made. I thought it suited me quite well. Um, it's not my recollection. Uh, we had a lovely, you know, we had a lovely house, yeah. you know, which we, which we bought and built from sort of scratch yeah. there. You know, we met somebody in a pub, started talking away, and next minute, and he, <laughs> I said, I'm looking for a house. He said, I'm just building one. <laughs> so then we took it from there. And, oh, yeah. and we, were the on, we were the only house in the street with a glass shower and all that, because in Australia, it's all showers, you know. But yeah, uh, yeah. in Britain at that time, it, it was everybody had a bath. Yeah. But I hate bloody baths, you know. <laughs> so I had this shower built and all the different, a, yeah. a separate laundry, because in Australia, you have separate laundries and stuff. I mean, Britain's changing now. It, it's just amazing what we've got now. Yeah. But, uh, no, it was wonderful experience for me at Cardiff, and yeah. I was I was well appreciated, and uh, I made many many friends. Uh, the the biggest one being John Antrobus. He lives in Dinas Powys still. Mm -hmm. I lived in Dinas Powys, and we used to have a beer at the Star. Oh yeah, I the, understand. Yeah. Uh, he was a wonderful man, and when I was in America, he came out to see me there as well when I was living in Florida. So be, be nice memories. Nice memories. Yeah, great, good. I'm glad. I'm, it's nice to hear you saying that because, um, you know, because you're thought of really positively at that time. It's weird. Like, I kind of don't understand that comment from Jimmy Andrews. But before you before you came to Cardiff, obviously, you nearly went. You nearly went back to Preston, um, but then you went to you went to Luton. So what yeah. was your what was your kind of recollection uh, of Luton? What, how did that work out for you? You did quite well, I think, didn't you? Yeah, I'd already played against Luton. Mm. On a, we had a world tour with the Australian team when Rasik took over. Mm. Uh, 1971, I think it was. Malcolm McDonald was playing for Luton Town. So on our journeys, we went to 13 mm. different countries, uh, getting ready to, to, you know, to start the World Cup campaign because it's, uh, we had to go through 15 games to qualify for the World Cup. Mm. Uh, Oceania now. Uh, sorry, the Asia the Asia group now, I think it has five qualifiers. In our time, it was one. But we also had to go to the Middle East. We had to go to Asia. We had to go Oceania. All those groups, we, we had to beat the best of. Yeah. Whereas now, you just need to be in the, in the top two in your group and you're, you qualify. Mm. So it's far easier now. So anyway, we went on that world tour and uh, one of the games we played Luton Town. Malcolm McDonald was playing and we beat them 2-1. I scored the winner and Harry Haslam was the manager at the time. And he shook my hands after the game, congratulated me, blah, 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 blah. So after the World Cup, obviously, Donny Shanks actually played for Luton. He, he came over to Australia and, and played a few guest games for somebody. Mm -hmm. So next minute, uh, you know, we, we sort of got to be... I'd, I'd say, yeah, yeah, fairly close friends, you know, while he was here, welcomed him to the club and, or, or the area sort of thing, not to the club. He wasn't, he wasn't playing for my club, but uh, I don't know whether he said something to Luton Town, to Harry or something, but anyhow, they came chasing me. Hmm. And so they made me the offer. And, and, and again, it's, it's from before. It, I was thinking about my family, my wife's family and stuff like that. You know, the language barrier, which, which could have created for, you know, going to Germany for my wife and stuff. Yeah. But uh, it, it was okay. I finished top scorer. Only eight, I think it was. But I think I only played 21 games. I, I, I got injured a bit. And hmm. Harry, Harry sort of had his, had his way of doing things. They put me through a, a rigorous pre-season training when I'd already just played in the World Cup I was sharp. I played against the best in the world and they have me running 10, 10 miles, 10 miles, 10 miles, 10 miles. And, and my pace sort of went. But at the time, it was the start of the season and the, the grounds were quite firm. Mm. The grounds were okay. 
and I'm, I'm used to having firm grounds and being able, I used to run with the ball a lot, have a dribble and, you know, do a few things on my own. So anyway, we started playing and played against Arsenal. I got man of the match in that game and, you know, hit the post, scored and made one and everything. I had a really good game. I scored, scored about four goals in five games, six games. And next minute he left me out. He said, things are happening too fast. I said, I've just been to the bloody World Cup and played against the best in the world. I'm not bothered about playing against pommies. Don't worry about English people. You know, England, England didn't even qualify. I'm not bothered about playing in the English first division, you know. So anyway, we had a bit of a, a, a thing there and uh, it was sort of an in and out role. Uh, played against Trevor Francis, Birmingham. I got two. We won that game. I scored mm. a couple of crackers against them and mm. and stuff. I could cope, but uh, obviously it, it was hard. Luton, nice. Uh, and again, always always had nice teammates and stuff like that and wonderful people. But you, you're playing against the best in England and you're the worst in England, the bottom three. So you don't get much of the ball up front. Okay, it's not yeah. like you're attacking all day. Is it, mm. you know? So it, it's difficult to get many chances. This was in the top division then, was it in those days? Top division, Luton, yeah. That was yeah. Well, I can't. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I, that, that, uh, that makes more sense. So they were, they were, were they only at the top for one season, Luton? Yes. Yeah. We went down to the, we went down to the second division. And yeah. uh, they owed me, they still owed me part of my signing on fee on the second season. They couldn't pay and stuff, mm. so. We um, we went down into the second division, uh, and then Cardiff City for some reason came in, and uh, it happened very quickly. What, what what was the the initial contact with Cardiff City? How did you how did you become aware of that? So, did did you have agents at that time? I don't know. No, not at all. I wish I did because hmm. in, in America when I went there uh, after I'd signed on for three years and stuff like that, uh, Rodney Marsh and George George Best's uh, agent and I met them of course you play against them but Rodney Marsh was my teammate Rodney Marsh you play for England and and uh, mm. we you know we got to be very very good friends and, and and his agent said how long have you signed for three years he said come and see me then he said you're on you're on probably half the money you could have got you know could have got a lot more and stuff like that yeah. and, and we didn't have agents I went to Cardiff and, and but I was more than happy to just Play. I mean, playing in Australia, you know, you weren't really on good money and, and stuff like that because mm. it was sort of premi, uh, semi-pro at the time and stuff. International football, you didn't get paid for. You just got sort of appearance oh, yeah. money to yeah. cover your time off mm. and stuff like that. So uh, I'd have done it all again. Don't worry about that. Money, to, money that, wasn't the kid. No, there's more important things than money, aren't there? Yeah. You know? um, just to say about Rodney Marsh and George Best, right? So yeah. I think... I, I I saw Rodney Marsh play once I think again uh, at Ninian in an England game, and I saw George Best playing against City for Fulham, but um, as individuals, I played against him. I played against yeah, him then. exactly. I was yes. in that game. Oh, yeah. did you? Okay, yeah. I was wow. in that game. Course, I was yeah. in that game. Yeah. yeah. And Bobby Moore. Bobby Moore Bobby played Moore, as well. Yeah. Bobby Moore. Back in England, yeah. Yeah. Any any kind of thoughts on them and them as kind of players, you know, and then kind of what you know what they're all about, sort of thing. You know, yeah, the, I mean, uh, ever, aren't they, really? as I said, I've, I've never been overawed mm. by playing alongside somebody or mm. against somebody. I've, I've never really, it's only after when you realise who you've actually and what you've actually done, mm. you know, like playing, you know, the biggest thing, obviously, is the World Cup of anything, of, yeah, of yeah. anything, of course. absolutely the, the epitome. So to, to come back and think that you've done really well against the best in the world, it, it's nice, it's nice to have that you know, for after. So same playing alongside them, playing against Georgie Vets, Gordon Banks, all of them there who who were, you know, in America at the time. Brazil's World Cup captain and all, all of them. It's uh, They were wonderful players over there at that time in America too, you know. Yeah. What was Rodney but, Marsh uh, like as a character then, Adrian? He was a character. Yeah. yeah. We we went to play in, in, in London. I, I can't mm. think who were playing. Queen's Park Rangers were playing against. So... Uh, we would we would take it off, and uh, no, sorry, I, I have to go back here. Rodney Marsh, we're, we're in America, and we were playing. We were going from Tampa to I think Boston. Hmm. So Rodney Marsh is in his suit, 
as we all were quite tidy and stuff like that. And his toothbrush is sticking out of his top pocket. Hmm. That was it. We all take a bag and a change, a change of clothes. Rodney Marsh, toothbrush sticking out the top pocket in his suit at the airport. That's it. Uh, it was just, but I think um, he was good at, at playing people as well, Rodney Marsh. He was, he was a, a lad and, and he, he, drew, he drew the attention by some of the things he did. He did them in a very subtle way. Yeah, a very flamboyant he, character, you know, can be yeah. Cool. yeah. Yeah, but a lovely, a lovely, lovely man. Yeah, he's, uh, he came around to my place with his family and, oh, right. you know, you know, around the, the swimming pool and his daughter oh. used to play with, play with my daughter. Oh. I mean, my daughter was only a bit of a baby, but Rodney Marsh's daughter probably was about, I don't know, then eight, nine, something, but yeah, it nice. was nice. George Best, did you get to know George Best at all? Did you come across him much? Played against him, of course. Yeah, yeah socialised after. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, he's, he's another, yeah, he was George Best, wasn't he? What, you know, what can yeah. you do? You sort of uh, met many, many people along the way and stuff like that. Yeah. It's great, though, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. It was good. It was what? good. It, it was same as Cardiff. I mean, mm. I've enjoyed wherever I've been. But Cardiff had something special for me, as I say. My daughter was born there. But I don't know what it was. They just had that rapport. The, the, the crowd, you know, I met some really close friends. As I say, you know, John Antrobus will forever be in my heart. You know what I mean? And uh, he, he still lives in, in Dennis Powers. It, and, and he was wonderful. Every Tuesday evening, he used to come around and uh, babysit for us. And my wife and I, we'd drive into the country because when we used to go into Cardiff, Mm. You you didn't get any peace. It was no, like no, no. you'd get you know hit by everybody surrounded. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It, it was a bit difficult to go out with your wife. That and 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 it was it was wonderful to think that um, you know people had that admiration for you. Yeah, I think it's. I, I suppose I don't know. Maybe all clubs are like it, but I mean, lots of players who've been to Cardiff. I mean, I'm biased. I'm a I'm Cardiff born. It's my club. But it just feels to me like a lot of players come to Cardiff and and they they pick up on that kind of affinity with the fans. Because again, we talked about rugby earlier, and everybody talks about Wales and you know Wales is a rugby country, la 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 la. But I, I think maybe that's possibly one of the reasons why the Cardiff City fans are particularly passionate because they they try to kind of put that one to bed a bit and they they make a bit of a fuss of their players, don't they? They do. And uh, when the Australian team came over after, mm. I was playing for Cardiff at the time. And I think I'd just broken my foot against Queen's Park Rangers in the FA Cup, I think it was. Mm. And I went down, to, I think they were playing in Birmingham, the Australian team. It, it's amazing. After the World Cup, when I left, the Australian team didn't bring anybody. Well, I was the only one who played in different countries. They didn't bring me back. So I missed all those internationals. For, for a number of years until the 78 World Cup. Mm. So in 77, after they've lost three games in the qualifiers, they bring me back. Well, they should have been bringing me back for all the games, but it's costly. It's very costly. So anyhow, the, the Australian team were on, on another tour uh, and it was 1975, maybe 76 mm. at Cardiff. And I went to Birmingham and I brought Otty Abonia back with me. <laughs> and all, all the others went to London and went home. Yeah. And he stayed in Cardiff and he was supposed to be, you know, 24 hours, but he met all these supporters. So the first night yeah. he, he ended up staying at, at somebody else's house. He didn't even stay with me wow. because they made such a fuss of him. He loved it. You know, that's there you go. Like you say, it's brilliant. Passionate. Brilliant. So that's a lovely story. What, what, what was Jimmy Andrews like when, uh, um, when you first met him? What, um, Cause he, yeah, what, you did okay, actually. You did, did well. Obviously, that got, got said you promoted, didn't he? As well. What was yeah. um, what was he like as a, as a character? I thought he was wonderful. Hmm. To this day, I still think he's wonderful. It was only the book after he's died, and it, and some statement was in there about uh, why they sold me to America because the or the British game didn't suit me or something. Hmm. I, I can honestly say it, in the, in the dead of winter when it's. And, and it's muddy and everything like that. And that's where I had problems at Luton Town. Their, yeah. their pitch is like a sandbox and yeah. I couldn't, you know, couldn't get going. So you, you can't show your true skills, no. but, I, you know, maybe some statement was taken wrong or somebody's put it wrong, but mm. we got on tremendously well. And uh, I, I admired the way he coached uh, and stuff like that. He, he, had, he had great tactics, especially when, you know, for example, we would play away 
and we played against uh, Malcolm Allison's team, which was um, who Crystal Palace. Palace, yeah. And I think they were slightly above us or whatever. We had to win the game. I know that, mm. and we did. I scored again. We won one nil, and Malcolm Allison was on TV. He said, "If they beat us, I'll eat my hat." And he used to work. Oh the door. yeah, that one. Yeah. There you go. Well, we beat them one nil, and I scored. And Jimmy Andrews, we mm. played that day mm. without any strikers at all. Tony Evans played on the right wing, and I played on the left wing, and everybody else just tucked into central midfield. So they weren't allowed out from the fullback position, just down the middle. And they were running into a crowd of midfielders, not just two, you know, we had like five in there. Yeah. But Willie Anderson dropped back, the right winger dropped back and Tony Evans pushed to the right, I pushed to the left and that was it. And from there we got break breakaways and then next minute I popped in the winner. So uh, he was smart. He was very clever smart. tactically, yeah, really clever tactically, it isn't it? it yeah. Was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. do, you mentioned a couple of them already, but I wanted to talk to you about a couple of City players because a couple of things with that with that era. One is um I was I was a young young teenager at the time, and maybe that's because I was a young teenager at the time, but it's it's one of my favorite eras of Cardiff City. <clears throat> but one of the things I loved about it is that 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 fabulous kit. So I was always being my favorite my, yes. my, my yeah, favorite, loved it. favorite yeah. city kit. All the city fans why why don't they ever bring that kit back? Everybody loves yeah. loves that kit. I think the away kit was the the yellow one, wasn't it? Was 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 pretty yeah. pretty smart right. too. But other nice. Other players who were with you at that time, um, there's a couple I wanted to mention. Firstly, you've mentioned him already, um, Willie Willie Anderson, as, yeah. as a player. P- pretty decent player, wonderful. wasn't he? Wonderful winger. Ideal for, for somebody like me who, who could head the ball. And uh, he was great. He used to take off and be able to clip that on the back post and stuff like that. Tony Evans, you know, a completely different player to me. He, he, yeah. he was not a, a good header of a ball. Well, you know, he, he just wasn't there for them. He was always on the first post and he, he was like lightning and stuff yeah. like that. You, uh, you, you, and, you and Tony Evans, Adrian, I think that's one of the classic, yeah. that's one of the classic yeah. upfront partnerships, uh, partnership. yeah, the, the Austin and yeah. Evans partnership, you know? Yes, I've got a T-shirt now. Barry Jones bloody brought it back from Wales. They're still selling them. They're still selling them. <laughs> 76, it says 76, Alston and Evans. The uh, perfect partnership or something, whatever it is. I'm gonna buy. Like one, I'm gonna buy one of those. I didn't know there was one of those. Not gonna. Uh, he got brought it for me. He brought it for me. Yeah, I've That's got lovely. it, and it's uh, it, it's so nice. Yeah, but uh, oh, there's many players. I mean, there's uh, Dougie Livermore. Yeah, and wonderful, wonderful man as well. You know, great player. Mike England, Welsh captain, played all for Tottenham. And you're talking about big players here. Closest, yeah. closest to me. The, the players who, who I probably knocked around with more than the others was uh, Clive Charles and um, Ron Healy, and both passed okay. away. So, so Ron Close Healy, that. yeah, I was going to ask you about Ron Healy because uh, Ron, yeah, it was very sad uh, yeah. a few years back now, wasn't it? Um, yeah. Ron Healy, one of my favorite ever Cardiff City goalkeepers. He just seemed immense, you know, he just seemed he was just in control, you know. He was lovely, fantastic, good man. And I, again, you know, they're nice people. But I, I have to mention Phil Dwyer as well. You know, he, I, I thought the underrated player, underrated player, he could, he had it all. He had it all up. And he played for Wills, of course. But yeah. um, it, it, they were all wonderful players, all of them. You know, you, there's Albert Lamour there, there's Freddie Pethard, there's, there's, you know, uh, the other Scottish lad, the midfielder, it, it's Johnny. John Buchanan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. John Buchanan. You yeah. know, time after time after time, these players, you know, they, we had a, a good team. I, I was quite surprised when I arrived and we were in 13th place or something. And I'm thinking, why? And, and, and I, I was so lucky too, because that first game I played and mm. I scored after early minutes, Clive Charles has, has, has hit a ball from the back and I've chested it swiveled volleyed before it hit the ground and the goalkeeper still looking for it it's it's it was a great start yeah, to do yeah. and then i scored another one and i made one for for tony evans so we sort of hit it off and, yeah. and i think that was a great start for me and the crowd you know clive charles ended up in america as well didn't he he did and yeah. he coached he coached their uh national team in the olympic games wow he wow. coached in, I didn't. In the I didn't, Olympic didn't know that. Yeah. 
He yeah. did. He coached the soccer team at the Olympic Games in Australia, and I went to Canberra uh, mm. to to where he was staying and stuff like that. I went out to see him. Yeah, you could say he passed away as well, didn't he, old Clive? He yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, John Buchanan. When we think about John Buchanan, um, Carter City players, we think about that thunderous shot, that yes. ridiculous free kick against Swansea from 35 yards, which which which, which goes goes back a yard every time we talk about it. But uh, he was he was he was a he was a good um, decent player as well, wasn't he? Wonderful player, and and he used to, I used to get the shits many times with him because he loved Willie Anderson. So whichever way he was facing. He'd turn and give it to him. Long ball, okay. Willie. <laughs> he did. He used to yeah. feed him like mad. But yeah. then again, Willie Anderson was good when he got the ball. He'd get to the byline and, and yeah. made many, many goals for us. But, Willie uh, ended up in America as well, didn't he? I think. I don't know. I think so. I, I thought. I thought. I thought he did because he kept just. He played. He had played for Man United, hadn't he? he? Played Manchester United, didn't he? Yes, of course. So yeah. he's a very top quality yeah. player. Phil Dwyer, by the way, my my all time favorite Carlo City player. Phil Dwyer, full, full stop. Just yes, my all-time favorite. Yeah, well, well, yeah. there you are. I mentioned him, and, and I yeah. thought yeah, he was the great all-round player. He could do anything. Great, yeah. strong, physically, could head, could could do anything. He, he was an ideal man to have with your team. You know, you always want somebody like that to be in your eleven all the time. Yeah. And uh, he played was it 560 or 570 or some ridiculous amount of games in the in the end for Cardiff. Yeah. He's got the all all-time record. Nearly died on the pitch. Uh, yeah. later on and then yeah just an absolute legend and at that time Brian Clark I guess was more of a fringe player because he was, he was getting on a bit by that stage was he? Yes yeah mm. he, he'd, he'd sort of just uh, backed off a little bit I, I played a couple of games with him we played uh, we played together against Swansea I think it was at Swansea mm. in a league cup or FA cup they were also always interesting games I scored two there yeah I scored two and Jimmy Smith was the coach and after I tore my cruciate ligament in America, yeah. I ended up back in England for a short while. But uh, we were staying with my wife's parents and he rang me and he wanted to sign me. I'm trying to think who he was with at the time. I can't think which club he was with, but I had to try and explain to him that I've torn my cruciate ligament. I went to Harley Street in London and he said, you're finished. Yeah. That was it. So yeah. I had to leave America, leave the house. You know, we had no, uh, I didn't want to stay there anyhow. Eventually, I just uh, yeah. come, back to, come back to Australia because for the sake of, yeah, you know, my family and, and, and the lifestyle. And the lifestyle, yes. I think that happened to um, Jeff Hammerman, I think, in his last game for Cardiff. We were playing, get, get, playing away at Bristol Rovers, I think it was. Or, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, in, in a game which we didn't even need to win. He went into a clash with the keeper and uh, that was it. He, he, he was yeah. done. It was the end of his career. Easily done. And, and the insurance in them days, mm. uh, Tampa Bay Rowdies paid me out. I had eight months to go on my contract. They just paid me. That was it. Finish. You know, they had the insurance money, but as individuals, unless you were paying for your own insurance, it was like, it was non-existence then. The club was the benefit you know, beneficiaries, not the actual player. Whereas nowadays, if it was your first season and, and you're finished, you'd be mm. laughing for the rest of your life financially. But as I said, you know, money's, money wasn't the issue with me. It, it, it probably should be now that I'm getting old, that you don't have much. <laughs> yeah, I think you do. I think you're doing okay. You're living in a wonderful place in a great climate. And, uh, you I know, have a, I have a magic family. It, you know, it's, mm. I have to turn everything back to my wife. You can imagine, like, first of all, she starts in Australia. She never sees her family again for six years. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, we, you know, we move to Luton Town, which is a long way from Preston. So you can't just zip up and down to there. No. And even a situation I said to Harry, Harry Haslam, our, we were playing it in, at Liverpool. Mm -hmm. So I said, is it okay if I follow the bus with my wife because she's never driven in England? And he goes, no. So that was it. So I jumped on the bus. She took off trying to follow the bus towards Liverpool and then turn off to go to Preston. Hmm. Well, it's a difficult situation. What a life. And next minute, you know, we get transferred to Cardiff. And I just said to her, come on, we're going, we're moving. So off she goes. Then we go America. Come on, off we go. Then we go back to England. Then we, all, all these things back to Australia. But all she's done is, is just supported me in any way whatsoever, you know, and uh, she was a bit of an athlete when she was uh, 
uh, in um, in Preston. Yeah, she was a runner. She was a runner and quite good. She ran for she ran for Lancashire, uh, but she gave everything away just to follow me to to Australia and then around the world. So she's been she's been my yeah the strength for for me to be able to do my things. Mm. And she's still here, and we have a wonderful family. Lots of the kids are fantastic, and and the grandkids and. But she's made it that way, not me. I was never home. <laughs> yeah, great that you recognise that, though. That's, and that's 50 years of marriage. is not not to be sniffed at. That's quite significant. Yeah. Congratulations yeah. On, on that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, coming back down to my level, which is Cardiff City, um, Tony Evans, I think he, he was scoring like 20-odd goals a season and whatever. And what, what? how How did you, did you and Tony sort of work on that relationship? Did it just come naturally? You just seemed to kind of bounce off each other really well, you know? It it happens, you know, right from the beginning because, uh, as, as I said, that first game I played, mm. and, and I, I managed to score a couple myself, but it, I, I just broke away down the right and I just played it across the face of the goal, just along the six-yard box. He, he was just... He was there before, you know, 10 minutes before he's thinking before me that I'm going to probably get to the byline. He'd already thought that out. You know, I, yeah. I, I'm going to get on the end of this and stuff like that. The only the only situation with him was I made him a heap of goals, knocking them down, passing mm. to him. He never made me one. Fair enough. <laughs> Because he, he, he was a tiny guy, wasn't he? Quite a small guy, wasn't he? But you, you yeah, you, but he was strong. He you, was he was very strong. He, I, I, I'm six foot, or I yeah. was probably a bit shorter now. Tony hmm. would be what five nine, something like uh, that. Okay, okay. But he was strong. He was strong. Yeah, very, very much. Yeah, strong and quick. And was, uh, his first touch was lovely as well. You know, he was good. He came from Blackpool, I think, to Cardiff. If I, if I, if I remember, I think that's I think right. So. Um, yeah, and he was he kind of. His best days, really, as a footballer, were, were pretty well with Cardiff. That's where he, he scored yeah. all the goals. But yeah, do you remember the Tony Evans song? No, no. Tony Evans walks on water. Do you remember that one? Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I only remember mine. Alston, ooh, ooh, Alston, ooh, ooh, the other side. And yeah. The, <laughs> yeah, Tony Evans walks on water. That's a fantastic atmosphere in that ground on occasions, wasn't there? Yeah. Oh, it was lovely. I loved it before, you know, and they all used to play um, I Believe in Miracles. The song as we walked out, that's mm. what they would play. I remember it so well. As soon as we ran out onto the onto the home ground, yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I went there before it was before it was knocked down, you know, when, when it was being knocked down and sort of yeah. took some shots. It was really sad seeing seeing that place being, being ripped apart. Um, I don't have the same affinity with the new stadium, to be honest. It's just another concrete stadium, oh. but the Indian Park was kind of special, you know. You, you you're famous for that 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 um very cheeky audacious trying to score from kickoff moment yes was that purely just off the you know no i've done it before oh, okay Australia. yeah yeah i've done it before yeah the only problem was it went over the bar i hit it too hard <laughs> it just yeah, bounced that... over the it, well, it didn't bounce it didn't bounce it went it just clipped the top, the of, bar. The, yeah, top yeah. of the crossbar i think you know mm. But uh, I could see him. He was just bending down, doing something. And I, I just looked up and I said to Evo, just give it, just put it there. Just knock it now. And I was like, hurry up. You know, just take the bloody kick that I can do it now. So, yeah, yeah it was good. They, 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 they raved by that one on TV for ages. If you didn't, yeah. Didn't they? yeah, match all, of the day. I was match talking about day. that. Um, of course, you won the I think when you went at City, won the Welsh Cup, got promoted. Yes. And you said played the Cup Winners' Cup. And um, was that the first time they played in the Cup Winners' Cup? For, I can't remember for Cardiff. Were you the first person to score in the Cup Winners' Cup, did you say? I was the first Australian player yeah. to score yeah. in Europe. First first Aussie oh, to... Oh, wow, what a great thing that is. Be, well, well, first Aussie to be transferred for money. First yeah. Aussie to, you know, I got a hat-trick in the FA Cup of Headers. Yeah. So I can't think who we played against. But anyway, I did, and and mm. and, and that was... You know the news all round with match of the day saying that tricks of the day and all this, so it was uh, yeah it was good. But the when we played Dynamo Tbilisi, hmm. who I think they got beat in the final by Liverpool or something. You were talking about a wonderful team, fantastic, and we beat them one nil at Cardiff, and I I scored a, a cracker from outside the box, and it was uh, what they're, they're great memories to to look back and think they're good achievements. You know what I mean. Yeah, I'm, I really miss those days when we used to win the Welsh Cup and then go in, go into Europe. But I don't, yeah. don't, don't think they're coming back in a hurry. 
Were you there when, I think you were already gone. Had you gone by 77 when we got that FA Cup win over Spurs and Peter Sayer got that goal? Yeah, I'd gone to, to uh, they sold me to Tampa Bay in America, yeah. Did did you did you did you see that? Because that was that was shown at the at the at the start of match of the day for for ages. That Peter yeah. Sayer goal was, uh, was yeah. always on there. Is Peter still around Cardiff or not? Uh, I don't know. Don't know. No. I think because he might be. I don't know. I went back to England for a while in Preston, as I said, and I was I was working. I was running a uh, a health club, Trimline Trimline Health Club, and Peter Sayers was a free member. <laughs> oh yeah. A free member. <laughs> so we used to knock around together in Preston after while he was still playing for Preston North End. We used to have a couple of beers together. Yeah. They it's, that, it's that one goal we, I remember him for, really. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's the only bloody one he scored. I kept telling him. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't score many, actually, did he? But he, he was. I kept reminding him, yeah. Peter, you need to start scoring. <laughs> yeah, when he was at Preston. When you when you went back out to when you went to 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 the states, obviously, um, you know, you 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 hooked up again with Franz Beckenbauer, and of course, you, and, you, and you mentioned that that he he still couldn't understand why why you hadn't gone to Germany, even which is which is lovely, really. Yes. Uh, all those years later, um, we, we, you you had a kind of an ongoing kind of friendship, I suppose, and mutual respect. Did you with with Franz Beckenbauer? Yeah, the, the uh, I think it was the two thousand and six. World Cup was held in Germany again. Mm. I, I I seem to recall, and he came to Australia. Mm. He came to Australia. I, I don't know what year it was, but I, I'm sure it was something like that. Yeah, he, be... he came to Australia, so I was invited to go to the. Um, it was like a promotional tour for the World Cup for him, and 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 he was the patron of of, of Germany and stuff. So anyway, they invited me to go up, as with most most of the Australian players. So anyhow, we, we got into this venue and Franz Beckenbauer was signing all the players' shirts. So I've got mine and I said to him, Franz, sign my shirt for me. You know, I said, because you didn't do it before. And he went, oh, I'll do it later. And he just kept putting it off and he just kept walking away. And I'm thinking, you rude bastard, you know what I mean? Don't do that. It's, it's not nice, you know? Anyway, we went upstairs and then he... He started his spiel and he had this video and it's showing the, the, the preparations for the next World Cup. And then it showed Australia playing against Germany from our World Cup in 1974. And he said, I've got a special guest this evening. And he brought me up on stage. Uh. And he had a, my own DVD. He gave it to me and it showed me dribbling around him three <laughs> or four times, kept yeah. repeating it. <laughs> he did. It was really, really nice. So he signed the shirt and we had photographs together and we were on the back page of all the papers and stuff. So it was, uh, it, it was very, very nice. Yeah. Awesome. Great I great mean, the, the, to have that, to have that from one of the greatest footballers <coughs> probably who's ever yeah. lived is just, you know, that is special. Isn't it? Special. Um, <coughs> well, you, you, you moved on then of course in, into coaching and one of the, first people I think you got involved with is Terry Hurley who I think is one of the hardest men who's ever lived yeah Terry Hurley frightening terrifying character <laughs> yeah he was a, he was he was hard yeah and uh, actually when uh, I knew him before you know hmm. we went to the World Cup and, and then coming back to Australia and so on again that's when we started so we just sort of you know, got together again, sort of thing, and uh, we started doing the things. But I played against him once. I was playing for St George, and he was playing for the club here where we live now, mm. down on the south coast. And uh, yeah, he just wanted to kick me all day. Yeah. yeah. Was it uh, Millwall? He was at. Was it Millwall? Was he? Oh, I don't know. I, I don't I know, know English. He's known as being a terrifying player, but so yeah. that, that was that was his kind of calling card, though, wasn't it? Really? Yeah, of course, straight away. Yeah. <laughs> do you obviously uh, did he terrify the players when he was coaching was that his thing no no he was all right on off, off the field yeah, yeah. so but, i didn't but, really get a, i didn't get a good look at him as a player it, it no. was only you know probably the one game i played against him when i was at st george and, and there after that you know you're moving to uh, overseas so yeah it was after he'd finished that we we got coaching together but you went on to great success as a manager, actually, um, especially, um, I suppose, the Port Kembla thing where you took them from kind of nowhere and, you know, just uh, it's great things. I'm from a, a lower league and then 
it's the most successful club even to this date in the Premier League. So, um, you know, that's that's our area. As I said, the, it, Australia's a big country. So if you say, we're, we're sort of called the Illawarra. So you have to go, the Illawarra, you would be 200 miles that way and then 100 miles that way, you know, down to, to the left. The, or the whole area on the coast is the Illawarra. So you can have, you can have teams from all that area. It's, it's quite a big, yeah. The vast area. So you're one of the most successful managers, aren't you? Sorry? You're, you're one of the most successful managers, aren't you, Adrian? Yeah, league, in, yeah, pretty well. In that league, in that league, yeah. yeah. Not in, not in the national league or the other stuff, but in that league, which was the Illawarra Premier League. Yeah. What was your secret as a manager then? What made you such a good manager? Do you think? I think the good thing was af- after all my international football and seeing mm. different managers how they work, yeah, and, and stuff like that. So. I take little bits from from here and there, and and also I had my own ideas about you know, the game is about winning, and and a lot of people, if, if somebody tells me about oh we play the best football, mm. but we got beat one nil, but we had ninety eight per, per, you know possession, we had ninety eight percent possession, mine was about winning. Let's win the game first, then we'll play the football, then we'll start you know, being able to have time to, to knock it here and there and play and be smart and all this carry on, you know, mm. play, play it short. If, if, if the team was dropping off us, play it short at the back. As soon as they're squashing us, then you knock it over the top and then away we go, you know. But um, from Jimmy Andrews, like, like I gave you that point when we played Crystal Palace, and I did that many, many times when we were going away somewhere or playing in one of these state cups against higher leagues, and we'd go and play and I'd do that. I'd play with the two strikers on the wings and we'd squash the middle back off and let them come at us. So, and then we got the gaps behind. So yeah, yeah. I did that. yeah. So, so listening to you speak and um, I'm thinking of a guy who's a two or three years older than you, I think he's three years older than you actually, um, Neil Warnock. Right. So Neil, Neil Warnock is 71 now. Uh, yeah. He was, he was well thought of in his time at Cardiff city. Very old yes. school manager. Hearing you say that about never mind ninety eight percent possession. Let's let's get let's get the points in the yeah. bag. I'm sure that's the kind of thing Neil Warnock would have totally agreed with. But you, yeah. um, I, I'm sure you. He's, he's one of. But those I didn't players. play like that. I definitely didn't play like. No, that. no, no, no. no. But you, I mean, he's, he, he, otherwise, he's, he's, otherwise, my striker would have been knackered. We've got we've got to get him some quality passes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Being a striker myself, I I I, I always try to work on when we're going to give him the ball. This mm. is not for him to fight against four other players. Because when I played for Australia, it was like that many, many games. Mm. I, I'm the lone striker. Playing for, for Luton Town, similar, because you're the lone striker playing against the best in, in, in Britain at the time. And mm. the only balls you're going to get is like to go for a fight with somebody to try and do that. You know, So I, I definitely tried to give my striker something of a bit of quality Give him a few touches as well. Let him drop off a little bit. Let him keep touching the ball. Otherwise, you just keep running and running and running and running. Never touch the ball. And yeah. He, and eventually, you stop your running and you, you, you know, you stop doing the right things. But it depends. It depends your quality of your team. If 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 you haven't got the players to be able to do those things, you have to find other ways to use them in the best possible way. And Neil Warnock, he had to do that because it, it it's the quality of the players you can only do so much yeah so then you you know you play accordingly uh, the only reason i was mentioning neil warnock was um i'm not, I'm not comparing you because uh, I, I don't know your, your 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 kind of style as a manager but you've, you've made made it clear what your style of manager is i'm just saying you know he's 71 he's still doing it he's still he's, he's currently got middle to play yeah. just outside the playoffs you know do, do, yeah. um you you're obviously very happy with your family life from this uh, and the other but i'm sure you must have plenty of offers can you give it one more go do they, do they come through now and again I've finished uh, I finished coaching I, I wouldn't know how many years it is now hmm. it's it's quite a number but since my grand my grandson started playing all I do now is watch them play so I can't do both on a Saturday nope. it's you know they they are very important for me to to go and watch hmm. so you know coming up from juniors to, to, to what they're doing now. And it's uh, the nice young men that, you know, there's a, the quality be out there. They're not going to make a higher grade, but 
they are gentlemen. They, you know, they've been well brought up by my son and, and with the greatest respect to, uh, of anything. And uh, they just send me all sorts of stuff, mm. taking the mickey out of me and any, mm. you know, always asking me, did you see that today? Did you know? They're asking me all the time for help. So I showed them the respect and I watched them in every game. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that's, that's lovely too. And you, you seem very happy and, you know, like you, you like you you've appreciate you've had an amazing career and, you know, yeah. and, and you've got, you got, you got everything you kind of need, which is, which is, I'm, which is, I'm which, still working. Yeah. Well, of course I'm you still, are. Yeah. The disability trust, of course. Yeah. That's right. Right. Yeah. Tell, 35 years. Yeah. Tell me, years. tell me about that then, Adrian, what, what, um, what, what's your kind of role there and what, what, what kind of things you, you yeah. achieve there? I work in independent living with a with a group of people who they live on their own. Mm. They've got no family. They are mild to moderate intellectual disability. So it's um, it, it it's just help with everything, really. You know, with the budget, with the with the medical, with the hygiene, with with you know, with doing everything and uh, their whole life, really. You know, so I work with six people, and uh, I see. Two hours, two hours a day, three of them, three, four of them, and probably, you know, three, four times a week and stuff like that. But I started off, um, a guy rang me up and he said, I work with people who, who, who have an intellectual disability. And I wondered, could you come to the indoor soccer and give us a coaching session? And I said, who are you? And he said, my name's Arnie Albrick, German background, but... Yeah. Uh, and I said, well, I don't know who you are. And he said, I know who you are. I said, you bloody play for Australia and everything. He said, come and give us a hand. So I said, okay. Yeah. So I did. And I went down. And then I did this for a, a couple of weeks. Showed them, you know, especially, you know, the goalkeeper where to stand when the play is going down that side, push over to the left post and so on. And, and the defenders and, and all that. And, and I said, well, when's the next game? He said, we're playing normal competition with normal people. And I said, you'll get, shit, you'll get smacked. And he said, of course we do. He said, I play with them. So I thought to myself, I'll have a game. So next minute, I had a couple of games. <laughs> and of course, <laughs> mm. you can see we let a couple of goals in, so I get the ball and da -da 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 -da, one back. Yeah. And I do it time and time again, da -da -da, one back. Mm. So we started, you know, I, I only had a couple of weeks like that. Because he played twice a week in, in the local competition, third grade, third division or whatever it was, played in yeah. this thing. So anyway, next minute I saw the job in the paper. It was a sport and rec officer at the Disability Trust. I didn't know this was the Disability Trust. Mm -hmm. So next minute I, I thought, I'd enjoy doing that, you know. So I applied and it's the bloody same bloke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that was it. Yeah. I started off and in... Wow. Uh, I think 1990, hmm. the Barcelona Olympics, five of my indoor team played for Australia. Wow. In the Paralympics. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. Five. Amazing. Amazing. Hmm. And from that, I went on and then the sport finished because you get too old to do that and be playing with them and stuff. And so I, um, I just do the, you know, the support now and everything like that, which I've, I've got a lovely job and uh, I didn't think I'd find anything after football. That would please me. And you got no intention of retiring by the sound of it? No. No, I've, honestly, I've not. Hmm. It, I'm sure everybody thought 65, he's gone hmm. for sure. But yeah, no, do a bit of salary sacrifice for the, for the superannuation and all that. Give some to the kids, making sure that everybody's okay. But, my, you know, my kids are doing well. They've both got lovely homes and everything like that. I'm, I'm in the little toy one. And, and and they've got they've got yeah. the big house. Yeah. <laughs> Both my kids. Now they're doing all right. Well, you've got you got a you got a, a sizable clock behind you, and I can see it's, it's getting time for you to. Uh, yeah, yeah. Time, yeah. But um, yeah. just before you go, it's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you. A, a really and you so too. Nice to, to, so nice to talk, talk to you. Um, you made it really easy for me. Thank you. <laughs> no, it's, well, you got so much to say. You got some. You just got a great. You had a fantastic career. You know. Yeah. Um, just looking back for the last time on on your time with Cardiff City. I mean, we've talked about it a few times. Do we have a final message for the fans or anything else? Or kind of looking back on your time in Wales? Or... It was the most enjoyable time 
and the, with the greatest respect to, the, to my teammates, my and 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 the supporters. Apart from playing for Australia, it was it was the most enjoyable time I've had in football, and it it, it for them to welcome me like they did, all the supporters and the players, everything made some wonderful wonderful friends, and still have. Still, as, as I said, you know, John Antropus is there. I, I, I still ring him up and stuff like that. Mm. It, it's like, um, I'll never forget that. I'll never forget. And my daughter's Welsh and it, it, it's forever ingrained. It's, it's like I'm part of it. I always will be. I'll be part of Cardiff City forever.